Are you guys having sticker shock at the supermarket right now? Just like I am. If so, you are not alone. I am right there with you guys. I cannot believe when I just get a small amount of things, how much things are costing. I'm going to be sharing with you guys 10 ways that you get in budget for groceries during this time of inflation because it's absolutely ridiculous how much that we are paying. And I read a shocking statistic for 2025 regarding groceries and how much they are going to be going up as far in price. Guys, you will not believe this. So this article that I found and saw on www.agweb.com, what will food prices be in 2025? It says for 2025, food costs are projected to increase 2.4% with expected rises of 1.6% for grocery prices and 3.4% for restaurant prices. Beef prices are expected to rise 5.5% this year and 2.2% 2 .2 in 2025. Pork is forecast to increase 1.7% this year and 2.2% next year. Don't worry, Star. You're safe. Is that not insane? Is that not absolutely crazy? Let's talk about 10 ways that you can budget for groceries during inflation starting now. If you have not already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so that you can receive more content like this for budgeting as well as investing. And I talk about mortgage free content and also show my budget. And make sure that you hit the like button if you are a long time subby and subscriber. Number one thing that you want to do first is get and create a realistic budget based on the number of household members that you have and you also want to create a meal plan for the week. Your meal plan can look however that you want for it to look. So you can plan out lunch, breakfast, as well as dinner, or maybe if that just seems a little too overwhelming for you, just plan out dinner. But make sure that you are making a plan because it's going to come in really, really handy when we go to the next steps. So you want to make sure that you have a realistic food budget based off of what you can realistically pay for groceries. Make sure that you are putting in just a little bit of a buffer for that just in case because, you know, prices go up and down. So you want to make sure that you have enough money for that. And you also want to write down exactly what you are going to get for the meal plan. So that means if you need to look in the cabinets first, if you need to look in the freezer, if you need to look in the fridge in order to see what you have already on hand. So that way you are not duplicating items and purchasing things twice at the grocery store. So make sure you have that list along with the meal plan and a realistic budget. That is all part of the first thing that you need to do. The second thing that you need to do is do a price comparison shopping at different stores. Now, not physically going in to go shop at them just yet, but what I need for you to do is look at the circulars if you receive those at home, or you can go online to the different stores and see exactly what they have and price compare based off of the meats, the fruits, vegetables, canned goods, juice, milk, dairy products. So you can look at Walmart, Aldi, value stores as well, as any other stores that may be in your area. I personally like to do Walmart, Aldi, and Sprouts. Those are my three tops and my three faves that I like going to. And I normally get whatever I need from those three stores. So you need to make sure that you are looking to see where you're going to get the best deal for what it is that you want to get. Number three, I would highly advise that you clip digital coupons or physical coupons. You may be able to get physical coupons if you still get circulars delivered to your home, meaning the newspaper circulars or just weekly circulars from local businesses that has coupons in there. But if not, check your local Dollar Tree. I know here they have on every other Sunday where you can get the newspaper and it has the coupons already in there. Some grocery stores such as Kroger have digital coupons so you can always click the digital coupons and use those as well. You just have to make sure that you know what coupon goes for what item at that store. So make sure that you have your coupons in hand ready before you go to the grocery store. 
So now that we have our realistic food budget, we have our meal plan for the week, whatever meals those are, we have a written list of items that we need. We've already done our price comparison shopping and we've clipped our coupons, whether they are digital or physical. We are now ready to go grocery shopping. So let's head to the grocery store. Say is that if you are going to multiple stores, meaning that you're going to Walmart and you're going to Aldi, give yourself time to shop and not rush at the one store. You don't want to tire yourself out and then go to another store and then you just start picking up everything that's not on the list. Maybe that may mean breaking up the grocery store trips, two trips, two days. I normally go two days back to back. So I normally will go to Aldi first and then the other things that I need to specifically get at Walmart, I will get those there. And then also I will also go to Sprout and get the items that I need there as well on the second day. Because normally I don't need a whole lot from Walmart on that second day. So that would be tip number four. Also, don't go when you're hungry. That's like the worst time to go grocery shopping. Make sure that you eat something before you leave. Tip number five, once you get to the grocery store, make sure that you shop the perimeter of the grocery store. This is going to help you keep the budget intact that you have, especially during these inflationary times, meaning the outside owls. So the fruit, the vegetables, the cheese, the dairy, all of those products that are around the perimeter. Everything that's inside is more of the, the wants and not so much the needs. I say the outside of the or the perimeter is the I need items. The inside owls are the I want items. That's where we're going to have our sugary snacks, our sugary fruit drinks, I mean, make sure you are shopping the perimeter first and then inside the house. Also have those coupons out and ready to make sure that you are matching up those coupons with the items that you are getting. Tip number six is make sure you are using a grocery store cashback app such as Ibotta, Shopkicks, Fetch, and Maryfield. I do have referral codes down in my description box for Ibotta, Shopkicks, Fetch, and I'm not actually sure if Maryfield still has a referral program. They used to, but I'm not sure if they do anymore. But if you use these cashback apps for groceries, you could select certain grocery items on there. It does not affect anything regarding the coupons that you are using. So you could still use the coupons as well as the cashback grocery apps. They do not negate each other. But use those for those extra savings and so that you can receive cash back for your groceries. You can use multiple cash back reward apps in order to get the money back. It's not like if you scan your receipt for Ibotta, you now can't scan it for Shopkicks. That's not how it works. If that item is on Shopkicks, if that item is on Ibotta, that food product item or whatever it is that you buy, you can most certainly scan multiple apps to get money back. I mean, that's the whole point of it, to make sure that we're getting money back and stretching our budget. Again, check my description box if you are interested in any of the apps that I've talked about here. There will be a referral code that you can join. And once you join, you'll receive some points. I will receive some points as well. It's a win-win for both of us. All right, number seven is if you can purchase items in bulk, at your local Asian or Indian market. Now, this is something that I do. I don't have the Asian market close to me, but I do have an Indian market close to me. And I always buy in bulk rice from them, as well as I found that a lot of products are a lot cheaper. So if you are not opposed to canned goods and stocking up on those, I would definitely look at the Asian or the Indian market because they are usually cheaper than the grocery stores that I've gone to local in my area. And it is my preferred way to definitely stock up on rice because I can get the huge bags of rice, at least almost like 20 pounds of rice, a whole lot cheaper than what I can get at the local grocery store. So the items are normally fresher as well, especially if you get the meat products from there and you get more bang for your buck. So definitely try to find a market that is close to you that can also help you stretch your budget. Number eight, 
local food pantries for dry or canned good foods. So you can get pasta, you can go and get peanut butter, you can get crackers. Now you do have to make sure that you qualify for the services from some local food pantries. Some of them may state that you have to be at a certain income level before they will actually provide services to you or that you have to be under a certain income level. Whichever it is, make sure that you are checking that out on their website and probably calling them just to make sure so that you don't waste a trip going there looking for services and food or vouchers and then you're not qualified for them. You don't want to be disappointed in wasting gas going there. And if you know somebody that goes to a local food pantry, maybe they are given more items than what they need. I have a colleague that is like that. She is always given an abundance of items. So normally she just shares some of the things with me. Like literally I got four boxes of spaghetti pasta that she provided to me. She was like, I cannot take this on anymore. Here, have some pasta for yourself and your family because I have at least eight boxes at home. So that is also a good way to be able to help your budget. The number nine way to go ahead and help your budget with groceries during inflation is to buy generic brands for some items. Now, I will say, I don't buy generic for everything. Shopping at Aldi, everything is pretty much, I guess you could say generic, or it's the store brand for Aldi. There are some things that I prefer to be name brand, such as cereal and a few other items. So normally I will go ahead and write down on my list to go to Walmart in order to get those things. And plus they have larger sizes, what I need, which is almost like bulk sizes for cereal and a few other things. So instead of me getting them at Aldi where I'll end up paying more for them because I'm having to buy more of the items, I will normally just get those at Walmart. But I will try and normally get generic items because that does help and save with the budget. And some of those items taste just as good as the name brand items. So definitely don't knock it until you try it. If you are someone that is not opposed to having generic brand items, then definitely go for it because that is a way that you'll be able to save money as well and stretch your budget just a little bit more. Number 10 which is the final one. If you guys have leftovers, make sure you freeze them for another time. Label what it is and put the date on there that you are sticking it in the freezer so that you can pull it out a different time. There have been so many times where my family just doesn't want to eat something after day two and that is totally okay. So what I do is I make sure that I put the rest in the freezer label it as I've stated, and then we can always have it a few weeks later. Especially it's a good way if you don't feel like cooking and you want to just take something out of the freezer, have it thaw out and warm it up because you've already cooked it beforehand. This is a great way to have those leftovers and help save your budget and it will taste just as good and just as fresh and all of the seasonings and everything else will be in those dishes. So all you're really doing is just heating them up again. So that is definitely a win for everyone. And right. those are 10 ways that we can go ahead and budget for groceries starting now. Like we don't have to wait until 2025 when things become worse, when inflation gets a little bit higher, when those grocery prices go up even more. We're already feeling the burn. We're already feeling the squeeze on our budgets right now. So let's go ahead and do what we can in order to actually get our budget under control and make sure that we are still eating well without eating a bunch of junk and putting things into our bodies that we don't need to, but that we still have the budget intact. And there's an article that says food inflation, which state cities have been hit the hardest. It's a USA Today article. I'm just going to share with you the states that it's saying has been hit the hardest with food inflation. And if you are in one of these states, please comment and share with us if you are feeling the squeeze and the burn. Like I know everybody is actually feeling that squeeze and that burn, but you guys may be feeling it just a little bit more than everybody else. I'm just reading this off of my phone, guys. It says Hawaii, San Antonio, Texas, West Texas, Oklahoma City, Greenville, South Carolina, 
New Orleans, Birmingham, Syracuse, New York, Miami, as well as Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Those are the metro areas with the largest grocery price increases in the last year. It says factors that have affected food inflation. Inflation rates vary by city due to differences in retail overhead expenses such as labor and rent. They also vary based on consumer purchasing patterns as different areas buy different foods. And then also we cannot forget natural disasters and things that occur. These hurricanes, these tornadoes that are destroying crops. Um, we've also had the issue with the strike that occurred. So a lot of products were not being able to get into the U.S. like they were previously. So we do have to think about those things too with the high prices that are coming up. But hopefully, as I stated, some of these ways that I have shared with you guys will help you with your food budget. Start today so that you can get a hold of it and control of it. If you have found any of this helpful, please make sure that you go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you have not done so already. And also give this video a like. I would greatly appreciate it. Until next time, your girl Nyjah will provide you with more tips and tricks on how to save with your budget. Until the next video, guys. Bye.